Unrighteous anger. That's the message. Unrighteous anger. Unrighteous anger. Believe it or not, anger is listed in the Bible as one of the seven deadly sins. Unbelievable, isn't it? Yes, sir. Anger is listed as one of the what? Every sin is deadly, but God purposely listed anger in the Bible as one of the deadly sins. Anger is a sin. Sinful anger, unrighteous anger, harmful anger is what? A sin. Come. Come. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. I'm talking about unrighteous anger. Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. I'm going to read 21 to 22. You have heard that it was said, please sit down, uh, instrumentalist. Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder. Amen. Amen. And whoever murders will be what? In danger of judgment. But verse 22 says, Matthew 5, 22. But I say to you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a curse shall be in danger of what? Judgment. And whosoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But who, whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Praise God. Hallelujah. But today we are focusing on anger. The Bible says in verse 22, but I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of what? Judgment. Whosoever shall say to his brother, uh, to his brother Raka, shall be in danger of the council. Anger. Anger. Amen. Amen. Anger has caused a lot of destruction in the lives of so many people. There are people who lost their lives because of what? Anger. They left this earth untimely because of what? Anger. There are people who lost opportunities of greatness because of what? Anger. There are people who lost who lost high flying jobs, high paying jobs because of anger. There are marriages that collapsed, crushed, destroyed because of what? Anger. There are people who have lost who are nursing. Nothing. Scars of wound, physical wound, injury on their body because of what? Anger. Come. Anger. Anger brings about God's judgment. Anger can lead to God's judgment. Amen. Amen. Today, I shall be looking at a few types of anger. Amen. A few types of word anger. Amen. A lot of people have also lost reputation. There is a man, I remember him today. He used to be the accountant of the church. He used to be. But I noticed he had this aggression and anger in him each time I'm talking to him over the phone. You will see anger for no reason. At the drop of a pin, it will ignite his anger. A drop of a pin can ignite this. And he's a man of God because he's a reverend. But a drop of pin will ignite his anger. 
He lost the job of being the church accountant because of anger. I replaced him because of anger. I replaced him because of aggression. At the drop of pain, and I mean it again, the drop of pain on the floor can ignite his anger. From zero to guess what? 100. Come on. Oh goodness. I have to replace him. I have to replace him. Amen. Amen. Anger causes a lot of health problems. A lot of the health problems we have today on earth is as a result of anger. People sleeping with anger. People determined to remain angry. People who love to be angry at every slightest provocation. Do you know there are people you stay with? I'm sure one or two people will know people like that. When you are with them, you need to check what you say. Have you who, who has ever come across some people? When you are with them, you got to think. You know, I'm not. I'm just chatting with you people now, talking, delivering a message freely. But when you are with such people, you got to think what you say. You got to be careful what you say <laughs> because you don't know what will trigger them. Because everything seems to trigger them. Before you know it, they're angry. Before you know it, they're aggressive. Now, before you know it, you're their enemy. There are people that you can crack jokes with. I don't know if you have come across such people. I have dozens. You can crack jokes with them. The moment you crack a joke with them, they will see it as a slide on their personality. There's this way they think that no one can explain. They get angry just because you're cracking a joke. Anger. Amen. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 11. Amen. I'm going to talk about sudden anger. Are you one of those with sudden anger? Let's see what sudden anger does. Proverbs 29 11. Are you one of those people? You can suddenly get angry. Suddenly you're angry. In your marriage, suddenly you're angry. In your relationship, suddenly you're angry. In your family, suddenly you're angry. You're always aggravated. You're always agitated. Sudden anger. Proverbs 29, 11, what does it say? A fool, listen to that. A fool vents on his feelings. Come on. It's a fool. The Bible says it's a fool that vents all his feelings. Before you know it, you are from zero to 100. And what does the Bible say? But a wise man holds them back. Restrain when, you, when you're provoked. Restrain when you don't like what people say. Restrain when you don't like the actions of people around you. It shows wisdom. Zero to hundred. A fool. Zero to hundred. One that has no self-restraint. They cannot hold back. And every slightest provocation, they are ready to kill someone. They are ready to fight someone. They are ready to insult someone. They are ready to, to, to stand shoulder to shoulder with someone. At the slightest provocation, the Bible says, a wise man restrains himself. A fool lashes out at every little thing. Proverbs 29, 20. Never forget it. I mean, Proverbs 29, 11. Never forget it. Let's look at Proverbs 29, 20. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 20. Do you see a man who is hasty in his words? Do you see that man? A man who is hasty? You know when you're angry? That's what the Bible is talking about. There's no more restraint. It is only when you are no more angry that you now go back on what you have been saying and then you realize, what have I said? What am I saying? What have I said to this person? But the moment you are angry, there is no limit to what you say. 
There is no break to what you do. And the Bible is saying, Proverbs 29 verse 20, do you see a man hasting his words? It's a question. There is more hope for a fool than for that man. That's what the Bible is saying. There is no hope for a fool than for a man who is hasty in his words. No restraint. No limit. No breaks. You just kick off. And that's it. You're already fighting your children. You're already fighting your friend. You're already fighting families. You're already fighting your spouse or partner or uh, a friend. No restraint at every slightest provocation. Some people might say that, well, I get angry, but my anger is just for a shot. But anger is anger. Amen. Anger is what? Anger. In that short time, just like a shotgun, when you shoot the shotgun, it might be short, and the distance might not be very far, but what is the impact? That's what we talk about. What is the impact of that bullet out of that shotgun? What is the impact? Praise God. What is what the impact? It doesn't matter if your anger is short or long. What matters is the impact. What is the impact of your anger? What has come out of you verbally? What have you done physically? Have you broken someone's jaw? Do you know so many people lost their lives as a result of anger? Do you know that? Amen. There are a lot of people who have lost their lives because of what? Anger. I'm talking about sudden anger. Many lost their lives. Amen. I was shown a Facebook, uh, something that happened on the Facebook. Amen. Something that happened on the Facebook. What happened? Two men listened to this story. If I was mommy, Pastor Nikki, my, my wife that gave me that, showed me that Facebook to watch. A man and another man, two married men, two of their wives were fighting. The wives finished their fight and left. But when the men came back home to hear what has happened, the two men came out and began to fight. Guess what happened? The two wives came out separating them. But the two women could not separate them. They took bottles in both hands, the two husbands, the two men, and stabbed each other on Facebook Live. And guess what happened? The wives screamed and screamed because blood was gushing from both until one, one of them slumped, died. A few minutes later, guess what? The second on Facebook slumped and died. Two men, two married men, two family men died fighting because of anger. The wives could not separate them. They stabbed themselves to death because of anger. I see blood gushing. I couldn't watch it. I just switched it on because I said, look at the fools. You left your wives widowed. Look at the fools, according to the Bible. You left your, your children orphaned because of anger. Deal with anger. Anger is not just a psychological problem. Anger can also be a spiritual problem. I will say it again. Anger is not just a psychological problem that you need a psychologist to, to deal with. Anger could be a spiritual problem. Moses' anger was not psychological. Moses' anger was a spiritual anger. He inherited it from Simeon, his own great-great-grandparents. Remember the children of Jacob who had to kill 
a prince who had violated their sister, the spirit of anger. That, that's, that's the spirit of anger that entered Moses. And that spirit of anger, because it was not dealt with, amen, it deprived Moses from, guess what? Entering the promised land. Moses, the great prophet in the Bible, died before his time. God took him away and did not, act, despite all his suffering, everything he went through, trying to bring the people of God from Egypt to Canaan. He went through everything. He performed all kinds of mighty miracles. But yet, despite his, his, his impact, being the first president or prime minister of the people of God, the Hebrew people, despite all of that, he did not enter the promised land because of anger. So, anger is not just a psychological problem. It can be a spiritual problem. And if it is a spiritual problem, it needs a spiritual solution. Deal with it. So that it doesn't deal with you. There are marriages that have failed because of anger. One spouse is always aggressive and very angry. And the second spouse cannot cope. So he just packed his back. He might be the woman. In, the anger is not just a man on both sides. So one of them will just pack their bag and say, you know what? <laughs> this man is going to kill me one day. I better just run away from this man. And she will pack her things and leave. Anger. It's both ways. It could be a man, it could be a woman. Number two. I have talked about anger number one, which is what? Sudden anger. Hmm? Proverbs 29, 11 and Proverbs 29, 22 we have read. Number two, sleeping anger. It's what we call sleeping anger. You got to understand that in the Bible when we look at the Bible, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. Sleeping anger. Come. Come. The Lord is going to deliver somebody. Amen. I said, The Lord is going to deliver somebody. Amen. The Lord is going to heal somebody of this Amen. problem. The Lord is going to set you free after this message. Amen. You will not be unnecessarily angry with your children. Amen. You will not go unnecessarily insult or abuse your children. Amen. You will no more unnecessarily out of anger molest your children. Amen. You will no more unnecessarily out of anger fight your wife or your husband or your partner. Amen. Out of anger you will not lose your job. Amen. A lot of people lost their job because they are always very angry with their boss. Amen. I remember one of our new pastors. We just got to discover he has the spirit of anger. This is one of the pastors in our branches overseas. Amen. 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 One of the branch, one of our branch pastors overseas. He has an anger problem. You need to see him in the chat when he was angry. I think two weeks ago. I couldn't believe it. You need to hear. You know, he was angry like Hitler. You know, if you watch Nazi Germany in those days when Hitler is talking, you see him so much strength. He, you know, so much strength. War, 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 war. That's how this pastor was. And I, and I had to start to address this problem. That's what made me get this message. Because of that pastor. Me to see him. Anger can destroy you if you don't destroy it. Anger can limit you if you don't limit it. Amen. Anger can cause death like we have seen. This is live on Facebook. Two men lost their lives. Like their wives were helpless right in front of them. The two women had fought and had gone away. They just came and continued to fight. And both had the same spirit of anger or psychological problem of anger, whatever is the case. And the result, catastrophic. I pray for you this morning. The spirit of anger must leave you. Amen. I say that spirit must leave you. Amen. I say it must leave you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The spirit of anger must leave you. Amen. By the power in the name of Jesus. Wherever you're watching it, this very program, 
If you have that demon called anger operating in you, it is cast out now in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are free from it in the name of Jesus. Amen. You've got to recognize, listen to this, you've got to recognize that you have this problem. Let me say it again. You've got to acknowledge that you have the problem called anger. It won't go away because you throw it under the carpet. It won't go away because you ignore it. It won't go away because you refuse to acknowledge it's a problem in your life. You've got to acknowledge you have a problem of anger and then you've been free. Praise God. May the Lord free you this morning. Amen. Sleeping anger or sleeping with anger, whichever way, how you want to put it. Sleeping anger or sleeping with anger. Ephesians chapter 4, 26. The Bible said be angry. You can see that it is natural to be angry. Now listen to me, church. You can see it is natural to be angry. But your anger must not lead you to sin. Your anger must have a limit. Your anger must have boundaries. Your anger should not lose, cost you to cause harm to your children. I mean, your anger should not lead you to cause harm to your children, bodily harm. Your anger should not bring death to you. Your anger should not bring destruction to you. Anger must have limits. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians 4, 26, be angry. But do not what? Sin. Come, come, come. Be angry, but do not sin. And the Bible also said, do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Come. You see that? Be angry. But let that anger not lead you to sin. Be angry. We got to deal with anger this morning. Tell your neighbor, I have to deal with anger this morning. Tell your neighbor again, I have to deal with anger this morning. The sun will no more go down on my anger. The sun will no more go down on my anger. Amen. The Bible does not want us to go back to bed with anger. The Bible does not want us to keep harboring anger day in, day out. Amen. Differentiate between anger and unhappiness. They are two different things. Amen. They are what? Two different things. Because you are unhappy, that doesn't mean you are angry. So differentiate it. Anger is a form of aggression. It triggers aggression. It triggers intolerance. It is destructive. Amen? It is what? Destructive. And it is self-destructive. So always differentiate between being angry and being unhappy. So don't go to bed angry. That's what the Bible is saying. Deal with the problem. When you're angry, deal with the problem that day. If you want a cool off, go and stay somewhere. Move away from whoever is, or environment, whatever is making you angry. Move away. Have a cool off somewhere. Come back, deal with the problem. You know why the Lord does not want us to sleep with anger? Because when we sleep with anger, it, it escalates the problem. Anger escalates it. The problem that needs to be quenched today, we choose not to quench it. And as day goes by, the problem escalates. The anger will lead to hatred. Anger will lead to what hatred. Anger leads to animosity. Anger now will now begin to trigger revenge because it is not dealt with. That's why God does not want us to sleep on anger because it escalates. 
Before you know it now, because it's still bothering you, you are not either associating with that person, you are not taking <clears throat> what you need to do seriously, because you are not happy in you, you are angry. It escalates. And because you cannot keep on harboring this anger, you want to revenge. So anger leads toward vengeance. Deal with it. Tell somebody, deal with anger. Deal with anger. Number three, striving, striving anger, or strife, S-T-R-I-F-E, striving anger. I've talked about sleeping anger, striving anger, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 22. Do you know, there's nothing that destroys a church like a striving anger. I remember one of our churches in the past. The church collapsed in a day because of strife. In one day. The members, one guy and some girls and all that, there was issue of boyfriend, this one befriend, this one the defender, and this one, one lady was not happy, one, was, one of the ladies was not happy, one of the ladies felt cheated, and there was so much commotion in the church, and it could not be settled. And you see them leaving, this guy broke my heart, this one left, this one left, this one left. And they came to the church to, to listen to the word of God. They came to the church for their hearts to be transformed. Instead of focusing on their mission in the church, they went into relationship issues. It became like a club where you this boy toast this girl, this girl toast this guy, the other guy toast, you know, that was all that was going on in the church until People's hearts, some of them now, their hearts were broken. Some were no more happy. They became very angry. Then they began to fight in the church. And the church collapsed in one day because of strife and anger. People began to leave. leave, leave. On in one day, 20, 30 people just left. Strife destroys relationship. Strife destroys businesses. Even in a business environment, if you have all your workers striving, the business will shut down. It will fail because of strife. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 22. Look at what the Bible says. An angry man or an angry person stirs up strife and what? Dissension. New Living Translation. An angry man or an angry person stirs up strife. Come on. Come. Come. It's better for us to drop deal with a problem that makes you angry, unhappy, sad, than allow it to escalate. Have you know do you know what's a dam? All of you know a dam. Imagine when the dam breaks out. What happens to the water? Uncontrollably. It will flood the whole environment. If you have ever seen a dam, imagine when it breaks breaks out, out of those limits where it is supposed to be, what happens to the environment around to flood? That's how strife anger is. When you allow it to get out of control, you will no more be able to control it. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Once you allow it to get out of control, you will no more be able to control it. It becomes destructive, deadly, harmful to everyone that is around you and your environment. Deal with anger. Tell somebody next to you, deal with anger. Deal with anger. Say it louder, deal with anger. Deal with anger. If, because if you break the barrier, anger can break every barrier. Amen. Anger can destroy every barrier, everything between you and someone. Anger can bring it to an end. Look at the story of the two men on Facebook. Two people that live adjacent. They live together in one environment. In fact, in one building. They lost their lives. Amen. Amen. Finally, harmful anger. 
that, that is the type of anger that is harmful to self. Amen. Anger can bring bitterness. You become bitter. Amen. Amen. Anger can make you a withdrawn person. You are no more happy. You are just angry for nothing. You are just angry for nothing. No genuine reason for your anger. And your anger is such type that you always allow the sun to go down on it. Days and weeks and months, you are just angry. You are not happy. You are bitter about nothing. When people even ask you why are you bitter, you have no, you can't even give a good reason. You're bitter about maybe somebody saying something. You're bitter about maybe someone dressing in a certain way. You're bitter about maybe someone, you know, acting in a certain way. You're bitter about someone maybe not saying hi to you. You're bitter about someone who maybe walked past you and you just assume the person has ignored you. You're angry about nothing. Petty things. Petty, 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 petty things. It makes you withdrawn. Anger makes you bitter. Amen. It makes you work withdrawn and work very, very bitter. Go and check it out. If you see people who are always angry, you see them, they are bitter people. They are never happy. Because every slightest thing, they are angry and they are almost angry with everyone. Bitterness is not good. Amen. Bitterness is what? Not good. Anger makes you isolated and aggressive. That's what it makes. That's what it causes. Aggression. Unnecessarily, you become an aggressive person. Amen. You become what? Aggressive. The helpful, the health issues of anger. Do you know what it is? I'll give it to you today. It raises your blood pressure. Every time, check your blood pressure. Every time you're angry, your blood pressure rises. That's what anger does. And what does it mean? I mean, what does it, how harmful is it? It's a high blood pressure. Very harmful. A lot of people like, you know, die as a result of high blood pressure. Especially if you're one of those that naturally, you have high blood pressure. Then again, you add anger to it. Such people might not live long. Touch wood, God forbid. But that's what it is. Amen? Amen? Anger will tighten your arteries. Tightens what? Your arteries. And when arteries are, are tightened, your heart rate increases. Come on. Come on. Look at that. High blood pressure. High heart rate. As a result of what? Anger. Anger. Amen. Anger. Do you know one of the greatest cause of indigestion and constipation? Anger. Bitterness. When you are angry to a point, not righteous anger. Because I'm going to deal with that next time. Don't miss next Sunday. In part two. There is righteous anger. We are dealing with unrighteous anger. Do you know Jesus was Every now and again, anger. Is that? We're going to deal with it next week. You see, Jesus angry. But his anger was a righteous anger. His anger was not personal. There was nothing personal. His anger was not towards any person as an individual. His anger was against situations. See the difference? He wasn't angry with Paul. He wasn't angry with Peter. He wasn't angry with Sarah. He wasn't even angry with Judas who Iscariot who betrayed him. He wasn't angry with the people who sold in the, in the, in the, in the temple, in the church. But he was angry with their actions. Not in person. You see righteous anger? You see the difference between our anger and the anger of God? Not in person. We deal with it. Let me not, let me not digress. Next Sunday. Amen. So we are talking about the health issues or health problems when it comes to anger.
and God will take the blood that is needed from all around your body. Amen. It will draw it from all around your body and supercharge you and get you ready to fight. That's what anger does. Pulls blood, needed blood, blood that are needed in all your glands and every other part of your body. It will draw those blood there and that's what prepares someone to fight. You'll be supercharged. Getting ready to fight. Like I said, anger causes indigestion. Constipation. When you're bitter, you find out when you eat food, it doesn't digest. You must learn to deal with anger. You must acknowledge that you have this problem. If you don't acknowledge you have this problem, you cannot deal with it. Some people sweep it under the carpet. They don't want to acknowledge they have the problem of anger. But you see it wrecking their life, destroying their lives, bringing limitation to their lives because they are provoked at every little thing. And everything is personal. They should look unto Christ, the author and finisher of our salvation. He was always angry, or he had he was angry in several locations, but there was never, nothing personal to the anger of Christ. Most of the anger of Christ was not, was not against any human being; it was against situations. Amen. Amen. His anger was against situations, not against people. I pray for you this morning. You will overcome. Amen. I say it again to the church. You will overcome. Amen. You will overcome that spirit of anger. Amen. 